so the default is 30 mil. So as you can see, when we squeeze the balloon, the shape of the esophagus or GEJ is clearly seen on the screen. Along the right hand side here, we have the diameter at each point. And you'll notice that the, one of these is blackened, and that indicates where the minimum diameter is. And it's very important, typically when you're looking at strictures or looking at a stoma, that that measurement is somewhere in the, the middle five electrodes. This particular catheter has 16 electrodes, the one for lap band has eight electrodes. But it's important that you center what you're measuring within the balloon, much like you would center a dilation balloon when doing a, a stricture dilation, for example. Over here then you'll see what the minimum diameter is, and also you'll see the minimum cross-sectional area. If you hit this button, you will see a measurement of distensibility and a measurement of compliance. And this compliance is essentially the volume one centimeter above and one centimeter below the minimum point, uh, the minimum diameter in the catheter. So it's a pseudo-compliance which could be used to assess, for instance, the compliance of the, the GEJ. You'll notice at the moment there's no figure here. And the reason for that is that we require at least 10 millimeters of mercury distending pressure before we can be comfortable that we're getting a good distensibility figure. And the distensibility figure is essentially calculated as the minimum cross-sectional area divided by the distending pressure within the balloon. Should you wish to save an image, you can hit save image. For instance, this is a 30 milliliter distension. We can choose that comment and now we've saved that image. Equally, we can save an image where we want to define a comment. So if I, for instance, user defined comment, I can edit the comment, and I'll just put it comment. Hit OK. And now I've saved that. If I want to go back and look at those, I can hit compare, and there's my two images. I can hit OK. To go back to the live image, I can hit clear compare, and now I'm back to the live image in the balloon. Equally, I can compare a stored image by picking one image with the live image. So here's the live image, and there's my stored image. And again, you can see the estimated diameters here. And also, you can see that the, the balloon pressure here. I'm going to clear compare just to get back. You can, if you wish, save a clip. A clip is essentially like saving a, a video image rather than a snapshot. So by hitting save clip, again I choose a comment. Let's go comment. OK. And now it's recording in real time that, that, that image, or rather that, that clip. So I can hit stop recording. And then if I want to play back the clip, I can hit select clip. There's my comment. OK, and there's my image, or rather my clip, being, being, being played back. I'm going to clear clip, just to get back to my live image. So you notice it says live image, and down here you have the balloon pressure being displayed. I'd like to now take you through the menu. There's not too much in it. New patient details would be for a new patient, so we wouldn't use this here, since we've set up the catheter. It's very important to note that when you enter a new patient, this is a single patient use catheter. You, you, you cannot enter a new patient um, details for the same catheter. So you only get to do that once. You can, however, change patient details. And whereas the ID will always be the same, you can fill in name, sex, age, and comments. We'll just put in a comment here. save and continue. Hit confirm to save the changes. Other things we can do in the menu, we can configure balloon inflate. At the moment we, we were doing it to 30 milliliters, that's standard, but if you want to do a 20 or 10, you can enter, say, a number like so. You can configure the inflation rate Again, almost most users use a 60 milliliters per minute, but if you want to do a slower inflation, you can set the, the infusion right there. 
not save changes. You can also change the pressure alarm. If, if the balloon that you have has a pressure sensor in it, then you can actually set up a pressure alarm so the machine will stop inflating if it reaches that pressure. What else can you do? You can change the date and time. You can change user preferences, which is where the languages can be changed. You can display different units of pressure. And finally, you can display either millimeters or French. So for instance, let's just change the display from millimeters to French. We hit French, save preferences. And here now we've got the, 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 the French size at each point. And this would be particularly relevant, for instance, if you're, if you're making a sleeve, a sleeve gastrectomy, or a, a gastric imbrication. And finally, filter settings. Um, the filter is off here, but if you want to smooth the signal, you can have a standard average, which essentially is an average over X seconds, or you can have a weighted average, which essentially is over a number of samples and uh, this is the one we use most often and typically people set it at high. So weighted average high will be the most popular setting and you can see now that the, the, the image uh, moves a lot more slowly than it was moving before. So going back to menu I'm going to change um, my user preferences to go back to millimeters save preferences and essentially now we've got millimeters here on the right hand column. A few other things to point out, you'll notice it says 80 millimeters is the length of the balloon, in this case the length of the imaging field rather. In this case we've 16 electrodes separated by 5 millimeters. So if you ever want to look at the vertical separation of for instance the, 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 the crust and the uh, G uh, G to see if they're separated by virtue of a hernia, you can actually assess that distance. And another way to do that is to pick the electrode of interest. So if this is the band of interest, and what this tells us is what's the volume between those points and also what's the length between those electrodes. So for instance, if this was a little gastric pouch between um, a lap band and, a, um, and the GEJ, for instance, you could see the separation of the distance and you can also measure the volume here. So that's it. It's a fairly simple system to use, return to normal mode. It measures dimensions and it can measure volume and, and give you the minimum cross-sectional area as well. In other educational materials we'll talk about the use of some of those figures, but certainly from a surgical standpoint generally the main interest is in an actual stoma size, for instance in, in a bariatric revision or a band stoma size um, to allow intraoperative band adjustment or finally to allow a sleeve size to be measured as you're creating the sleeve. So for instance if we go to user preferences French again you know in this instance we could see that our French on the sleeve is approximately 55 to 60 and for a procedure like gastric imbrication as you put the stitches in you'll start to see the, the sleeve French come down so imagine the top here is where you're actually currently stitching. So I hope you found this uh, video useful and if you have any questions please feel free to contact us at info at crossbond.com that's I-N-F-O at crossbond c-r-o-s-p-o-n dot com